Hello and welcome to the How To Carnivore podcast. I'm your host, Simon Lewis, and you're tuning into the Plant Free MD series with Dr. Anthony Chafee. Dr. Chafee is a surgeon, nutritional researcher, and former pro rugby player. He's been strict carnivore for three years and an on and off carnivore for more than 20. Dr. Chafee looks and feels like a real life superhero. If losing fat, building muscle, finding focus, and getting the most out of life is important to you, you're going to love the Plant Free MD series. Hey everyone, we're back with Dr. Chafee again. Uh, and now we're gonna talk about cholesterol, which is a huge topic and hotly debated. Uh, Dr. Chafee, welcome. And what don't, you. what don't we know about cholesterol? Uh, well, so, so the thing is, especially you know, in the carnivore community or, or going ketogenic or whatever, everyone says, well, what about your cholesterol? What about your cholesterol? It's not the first and, thing people say. Yeah, and you know, my answer to that is, like, I don't care. You know, what about it? You know? yep. Cholesterol was never a problem. Cholesterol was never an issue. It was never a di- marker of disease. It was said to be such, but that, that's wrong. And we, we not only know it's wrong, but we know it was fraudulent. So the Journal of American Medical Association published in 2015 actual mm-hmm. internal memos from the sugar companies back in the 40s and 50s talking about how there was research coming out saying that sugar was actually the cause of heart disease, which was a brand new disease. And so they were like, we need to cover this up. And so in their own documentation, they detailed how they paid off three Harvard professors to falsify data and publish fraudulent studies to make it appear as if cholesterol was causing heart disease when it was really sugar and to exonerate sugar. And then one of those professors was named head of the USDA in 1965. And then the USDA is the one who declared unequivocally that cholesterol causes heart disease, saturated fat increased cholesterol, stop eating both, okay? So that was a teacher coming down going, oh, discussion's over, argument's done. But there was, this was hotly debated for decades. And then all of a sudden, USDA said, nope, this is it. And it destroyed the careers of everyone saying, uh, no, this is actually sugar. It actually is sugar. Um, there are books written about it. Um, and there's much more research now showing this. But you know what happened just directly right then? So this changed, changed the world, certainly changed America. And then it had this domino effect of these other countries taking on these dietary recommendations. So just in America, we reduced our cholesterol and fat cholesterol intake by 33%. Mm-hmm. And you know, obviously, you don't want meat. Meat's bad for you. Meat has cholesterol. This is why this is what meat became vilified at first because it had fat and had cholesterol. So you don't want that, especially red meat and eggs. Those are the worst, right? Um, and that fruits and vegetables and grains were good and heart healthy because they didn't have cholesterol. That was the entire argument. The entire basis of argument was this doesn't have fat, therefore it's good for you. you know, rocks don't have fat either. You yeah, know? So and arsenic <laughs> doesn't either. You know, so um, bad argument on its face, but. People listen to this, you know, and so reduced our fat and uh, cholesterol intake by 33%, reduced red meat by 30%, increased fruits and vegetables by 30 and 40% respectively. And what, what, what were the results? The obesity rate tripled, heart disease tripled, stroke rate tripled, cancer rates tripled, type 2 diabetes, autoimmune disorders, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, even developmental delays such as you know, autism and so forth, they all increased exponentially. You know, they almost didn't exist before this time, now they're the only things we treat. So, so we've removed cholesterol yeah. and then heart disease yeah, up goes as way well up. as a myriad yeah. of our lifestyles. Well, well that's it, you, know, you, you can't say that cholesterol causes heart disease if you reduce cholesterol and heart disease triples. If anything no. you can say that cholesterol the is protected. Says no. Yeah. no, exactly, and so you, know, that, that, again, you can't say that A causes you know, B, if you reduce A and B increases dramatically. If anything, you say A uh, is protective, and actually all the studies post-2015 have actually shown this, okay? So there are a lot of studies uh, that came out in 2015 with hundreds of thousands of patients looking at, you know, LDL cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, um, and, and heart attacks and strokes and so forth, and they found that people with higher LDL cholesterol and higher saturated fat intake and so forth were actually having less heart attacks having less strokes and they were having and they were protective against Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, right? Because everyone's eating this heart healthy, you know, low fat diet mm. and then their brains are decaying because they're not getting the requisite, you know, very long chain fatty acids and THA and so forth that, that helps and supports their brain. So they're all decaying and becoming um, you know, uh, uh, demented as they age. And so, you know, eating uh, yeah, it's a horrible, horrible uh, disease. And uh, but really, it's just malnutrition. You're not getting the requisite nutrients to maintain your body and your brain. So, you know, eating more saturated fat, high, having higher cholesterol is protective against that. You know, it's also protective against heart attacks. One of the things that I never uh, heard anyone explain properly when I was going through medical school was why was it if cholesterol was, was the only thing that mattered, 
uh, with heart, well, the main thing that mattered with, with heart disease, why is it that 50% of people who have heart attacks have lower normal LDL cholesterol? That never made sense that's to me. That's a good question. And so now we know that, that that's crap. And so there was a study in 2015 with 60,000 patients that looked at people over the age of 70, or sorry, 65 uh, with statins, right? So a statin is, is a medication to reduce your cholesterol. Most people are on this crap. Um, and they have side effects, right? They have, they have serious side effects. They, they sap your uh, cells of vitamin CoQ10, mm -hmm. and that can actually cause damage to your muscle, muscle cells, including your heart, right? So you have to supplement with vitamin CoQ10. Any doctor that's, that prescribes uh, statins without also prescribing vitamin CoQ10, I think it's harming their patient. And so they, you see this, so it has side effects. It has things that you don't want, but you, you, met, you weigh you, the balance of a medication with the effects that you want versus the effects that you don't want. You want the, you know, you want the, the benefits to outweigh uh, the side effects. But now you have something that's, you know, they had this, these studies with the, with the statins and so forth. They found that people with the statins and with lower LDL cholesterol were having more heart attacks, were having worse outcomes, were having more cardiac related deaths. Okay, or at least they weren't getting a benefit from that. So you're getting side effects from the statins, and it's not really providing a benefit. So why are we doing that? And so this this article, uh, this study, you know, as a conclusion, is, you know, said it's like we seriously need to challenge our thinking on whether or not statins are actually good for people. Okay. You know, because this is you know, this is this is at least equivocal, if not causing harm. That's what they found in this study with 60,000 people. And, um, you know, well, well, now we know that we know that cholesterol wasn't the problem. So you, you're taking a drug that reduces something that's actually beneficial to you and is causing side effects. So, so no, this isn't going to be very helpful. Uh, and there are other studies, but, you know, tons of studies, you know, hundreds of, hundreds of thousands of people, you know, additively uh, showing that the cholesterol is actually beneficial. Um, you have things, you know, and so, so people started looking back at these, these studies, you know, there's the, there was a seven nation study that uh, I believe Ansel Keys came out with, and you know, he was a very influential scientist. He came up with the, you know, the RDAs, recommended daily allowances, you know, he's a nutritional scientist and so yeah, forth. Sure. Had a lot of clout, uh, but he also was bought and paid for. There's documentation of this, that he was a paid stooge of the sugar companies and he was putting out bullshit and so one of the studies was the seven nation studies and all these all these studies actually showed only a correlation you know correlation is not causation all these studies were correlative they were very bad and they were only correlative but they just kept pumping these things out people said oh well it's just this preponderance of evidence I remember reading a, a journal article in 1956 from Journal of American Medical Association talking about how you know basically people have accepted that Cholesterol is causing heart disease, but he's like, you know, but this is based on, you know, as this argued, said this is based on very poor studies, very low quality evidence, and he just went through them and just tore these things mm -hmm. apart. It's back in 1956. Wow. You know? Is that is that like a paper or something? That yeah, in, in, in JAMA, yeah, the General American Medical Association. This guy just excoriated these things for like, you know, 12 pages, just, just ripping these things apart. Way back when, and we're still having this debate now. Yeah, exactly, you know? yeah. Well, that's because of the USDA, because this, this was hotly debated, but the sugar companies just kept pumping in all this oh well look at this look at what we find and stuff with but they weren't actually saying that they were being funded by the sugar companies that was the thing that's illegal you have to you have to, you have to say it. It exactly it. yeah and so they weren't doing that and so you know you start looking at these look at the, the seven nation study that that showed you know seven countries and on a graph on how much you know cholesterol uh, they were eating and the rate of heart disease right and so it's this parabolic curve you know the more saturated fat the more heart disease that, that's what they showed um, they showed it for seven, seven countries, right? But actually, they had complete information for, I think, 20, 23 or 24 countries, right? They used the seven that fit that curve. Perfect. And you plot all Jerry, the rest of them. Jerry P. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's just, just sort of, you know, just show what they wanted, wanted to show. And if they had more, uh, or, and if you just plotted all of them, it's just scattered. It's all right. There isn't even a correlation. Now again, correlation is not causation. So you have this correlation, this correlative graph, but that's not causation. You don't know why that is. But there isn't even a correlation. Because when you, when you plot the, the other you know, nations in that, that they had available data for at that time, there isn't even a correlation. Okay, so that's out. 
uh, and that was out then. They knew it was out, and then there was a thing called the Framingham Study. It's it's really the you know the, the you know keystone study in cardiology. They followed these I think you know factory workers uh, in um, in you know in, Nor in New England for like 20 years, okay. and they've looked at all these different markers and things like that, and you know what what was sort of indicated in different sort of health outcomes, and they concluded and they reported that higher total cholesterol is before we distinguished any of the kinds of cholesterol, but total cholesterol, um, the higher total cholesterol, you know, more at-risk cardiovascular risk you would, and there's, oh yeah, well this is it, you know, we've done, you know, 70, it was like 76,000 people over, you know, 20 years, this is, this is conclusive. First of all, correlation, not causation. Second of all, their own their own data showed the opposite of what they reported. So they actually, the actual outcome was that the higher total cholesterol you had, the more protected you were from it. You didn't have heart disease. Heart disease, no. And so they, it's completely fraudulent. And so that was completely misreported. That's now been reversed. Not everybody knows this yet. Even in the medical community, we had a, you know, a debate with um, you know, carnivores versus vegans on the acne. And one of the people on the on the vegan side was a was a cardiologist, and he was not aware of these these studies. You know, and he's still talking about how cholesterol is is the end all be all. We're having another debate in February yeah. just on cholesterol, and, and I've been asked to be a part of that as well. And we'll see we'll see you know what they respond to that. But you know, we know that this was fraudulent. We know that there isn't even a correlation. We know all these things were made up. And now we have all these studies post-2015 showing the exact opposite of what we've been told. And we have the work from Dr. Robert Lustig from UCSF, you know, in the biochemistry department showing that fructose is, you know, they, it, you know, they have, uh, you know, is, I don't know if they've shown causation between um, fructose and heart disease, but they've shown causation between fructose and metabolic disease, mm -hmm. metabolic syndrome. And so, you know, they've showed biochemically that this is this is uh, you know integral in that disease process, inflammatory disease process of heart disease. So, you know, this is this is completely this is completely wrong. So people ask me what my cholesterol is, uh, and I tell them I don't care. Yeah, I, I literally don't care. You know, you get certain types of cholesterol from fructose and alcohol, like SDLDL, VLDL, these are small particulate sizes of LDLs, tons of different kinds of LDL cholesterol. Um, you know, we're talking about, uh, you know, Dr. Mason in the, you know, um, uh, low carb Australia, low carb down under uh, talks. He does, he does a lot of talks specifically on particulate sizes of, of cholesterol and, and what, what matters uh, and which ones do what and why you have to care about this. Um, so whatever your LDL cholesterol is, it matters what the particulates are, and some are good and some are bad. Right. Well, the ones that are bad come from alcohol and fructose, right? And then if you if you have high blood sugar, blood sugar is, is harmful because you know when you have have it too high, it will actually physically fuse to other molecules called glycation, um, and so you can glycate these SDLDL and VLDLs and make them act in a pathological fashion, and that is actually part of, of this process of atherosclerosis. Um, so if you're not eating sugar or drinking sodas or drinking alcohol, um, you're not going to have the SDLDL and the VLDL. Which are the real the harmful, harmful ones. The real harmful ones, yeah. And if you're not eating a bunch of carbohydrates, so your blood sugar is you know, at a standard level, it's not jumping up and down wildly, then you know, you're not going to be glycating these things if you had them, which you don't. Right, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your cholesterol is if you don't eat that crap, mm -hmm. you know. And so, you know, one one way you don't want to always check for the particulate sizes of things. Well, one way of looking at that is to look at your HDL and your triglycerides. If your HDL is high, as you know, the standard test would consider high, and your triglycerides are low, then that means that you actually have whatever your LDL cholesterol is, high or low or whatever. They're the good kind of LDL. Right, okay. more, so more. that's the relationship. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you can look at the particular size and so forth, but that, as a, as a general rule, if you have high LDL cholesterol and low triglycerides, your LDL is fine. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. So, in, in summary, you know, uh, there is no correlation or causation between no. cholesterol and heart disease. No, absolutely not. But there is with sugar or with yeah. carbohydrates.
Yeah, sugar, carbohydrates, and, and that sort of whole thing. Yeah, yeah. There, there was a book um, written in the nineteen seventies. I think it was called. Um, what was it? it was like sweet white deadly or something like that and it was um it's something like that anyway but yeah it was it was, it was all the arguments on why you know sugar is, is causing these problems and you know sh sugar you know, heart disease is a, is a very newly discovered disease and as as people were saying at the time how can you know you know we've been eating fat forever yeah. how can yeah, an ancient diet cause a new disease yeah. That, that doesn't that doesn't yeah. hold water and people say well you know it was just happening all the time which is we just didn't notice it because we're just so stupid and I was like yeah Einstein was an idiot you know <laughs> that guy and you know da Vinci you know yeah yeah what, yeah, what a exactly. moron he was you know inventing a helicopter in the 1500s I mean it's just an idiot you know <laughs> and um, you know no I mean these guys you know they had they had to they had they did more with less. You know, we have iPhones, we can look up anything. They didn't have that. They had to figure it out themselves. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when they're doing the, you, you made your name as a doctor by discovering new diseases and new things that-, that, that Yeah, so uh, that, they would have been on the hunt. Absolutely. We're trying to find out. You, you're, do, you're doing dissections and dissections and dissections and autopsies and autopsies and autopsies and autopsies. And if you were the first one to discover, you know, heart disease and atherosclerosis, you'd be all over that thing. You'd name it after you know? yourself. You would, absolutely would. <laughs> and so and that's how uh, you made a name for yourself as a doctor, you know? And so, no. No, we wouldn't have. We wouldn't have it has just been happening forever. Yeah. You know, they look back to, you know, like ancient Egyptians and look at mummies like, oh, they had atherosclerosis. Um, it must have been because the kings were, you know, uh, eating a bunch of fat, fat and all these yeah. sorts of things. Well, they actually mummified everybody, not just the king, not just the pharaohs, you know. And so they actually looked at that. They all had this stuff. They were all pretty fat. And they had these statues. They had these guts, and the guys had gonocomastia and so forth. And what uh, was that? Wheat. Yeah. They're eating a bunch of wheat. Yeah, yeah, a lot of grains. And so, you know, they all had these sorts of problems. And so they said, well, you know, it must have been the pharaohs eating all these sorts of things. But we actually have the isotope studies. So stable isotope studies, you can see basically what, what animals have eaten is you take the mummy or the fossil or and, and you can and you can actually test and see what they've been eating. If they've been eating, you know, plants, or if they've been eating animals that ate plants, or they've been eating animals that ate animals that ate plants. Mm -hmm. Right, and then as you hear the carnivore rating, and this is how we know that humans are hyper carnivores, last you know two two and a half million years, because we were eating animals that ate plants, but we we're also eating other carnivores that ate animals that ate plants. Right. Okay. And so they did these these stable isotope studies for these mummies, and they found that no, they were all eating the same thing. They were all basically eating a bunch of wheat. The grain on the bread. Yeah, and maybe the, maybe the wealthier class was able to eat more of it because they you know they could afford it and so forth but they're all eating the same things mm -hmm. yeah yeah so cholesterol is, is not what we've been led to believe perfect thank you yeah